instead of saying, I saw that you were in that meeting and um, you were being condescending, right? <laughs> uh, I could be like, I noticed uh, there was some tension in that meeting, you know, are you okay, right? Starting with what's going on, maybe there's something that's uh, causing and then, you know, if they open up, great, you can continue down that line. If they don't, you know, just challenging that and saying, you know, um, I've heard from some people that this, um, they felt this way or that way. It's about kind of, nobody can challenge feelings, right? If I'm feeling a certain way or if somebody else is feeling a certain way, it's not under their control to change that, right? So they don't feel as threatened. So for me, it's about giving some context, but, you know, things that maybe I feel or somebody else has felt um, that really helps. Uh, it resonates with me in a way that, um, to your point, like what you can challenge feeling. There's also this fine line of, and I'm going to be, uh, a little bit descriptive here to, to get an answer, uh, or to kind of like shift this to this, uh, to this thing that I have in mind. So please bear with me. There's a fine line between thinking something, for example, I've had managers that I can say they were very pissed in a specific moment, but they were trying to choose the right word versus I've had managers that they genuinely seemed curious about why I did something the way I did or why I said something the way I said. So how do, how do you also encourage or how do you think folks can really um, choose which path they're on? Because I think for engineering managers, they should also, or for managers in general, they should also know that, am I really thinking something and trying to find the right word? Or am I really curious? What, what are some of the tools you would recommend for managers to observe themselves at that moment and maybe be aware of what choices they are making? You know, um, you actually kind of, you actually gave away the answer <laughs> while you were uh, talking without even knowing. Um, but you know, at least from my side, it's, it's coming from a sense of curiosity and that's when I challenge myself of, you know, am I coming from a place of curiosity and trying to figure out, is this person doing this or that, or are they, you know, uh, just stressed out, um, you know, what's really happening versus telling them what's going on or, uh, telling them, you know, what's right or wrong or things like that. Cause then you just become this authoritative, um, person that's just telling people what to do. And that's not what people want in managers. What are some of the practices you would recommend for managers who may notice this, that, oh, it seems like I've been authoritative sometimes with my team. What are some of the practices that you would recommend for those folks? I think it's really about looking at yourself and figuring out what kind of leader you want to become, because if you do want to become that leader, that's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's about how you want to live your life. Right. So I'm not here to tell you how to lead, but if you're looking to become better as a leader, I think it's important to reflect on the one-on-ones that you have with people and how you approach situations. And like I said, like you said too, um, just coming from a sense of curiosity and, um, understanding the true like issues that people are having and getting to a root cause rather than just having this, you know, like, Oh, I assumptions that are being made a lot of times because as a manager, I think 80% of the time I'm using my gut, but if that 20% of the time, I don't want to be wrong in that scenario, I'd rather confirm it. Um, and kind of come from that sense of curiosity and uh, confirm my gut 